I would like to describe it in the word of one of the singers who said that he felt like God was not living with them. God was just visiting them, coming from the other tribe, and he visits them, talks to the people, and afterwards, when they close the Bible, God goes back. For us to have the Bible in our language, God is not just visiting, but he is the Emmanuel. He lives with us, God with us, God in our hearts. And so it becomes very, very important for us to have the Word of God in our language because we, people feel that now they can understand and they know that God is concerned about them and not just speaking to them through another person, through another language, but he's speaking to them directly, heart to heart, soul to soul. When it resonates with you, it shapes your upbringing, it shapes your life, it shapes your understanding, it shapes your character. But if from another language, it means you have to translate the character, translate the attitude. But if it is in your language, it comes to you as it is, as you have heard it. Love your neighbors, you love yourself. You don't need another person to translate that. It just comes direct to you. to transform people's lives. It creates faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. From the time this world was born, we have never had a singer Bible. We have always been using our neighbor's language, like the Tumbukas, the Chewas, the Bembas. As a result, people are failing to understand to the fullest the importance of the Word of God. Well, the Sengas uh, came from Luba Lunda Kingdom in uh, present Zaire, or Democratic Republic of the Congo, in the 1500s. The migration, the great migration from uh, the Sudan, uh, from the Middle East uh, down to Sudan, and then to the Congo. They are looking for places that are quiet and without conflicts, and also where they can find lots of food. And uh, Chama is along the Luangwa Valley, and it has got lots of wildlife. Water is from the, the, the from the river. The district has got seven chiefdoms. The chiefdoms are like families. The same family having seven children, and each child creates a big village which grows into many, many smaller villages. They span from 150 to 170 kilometers within the same district. So these chiefdoms are bordering other tribes. The influence from those tribes having a toll on the Senga language the whole district was using a borrowed language. And so for you to communicate uh, to the locals, for them to understand, it was something challenging. What many actually was missing was the truth in the gospel. When we went for evangelism in Chama, because we want to bring the gospel to the people, one of the things that struck us most is the marrying of, of girls at a very tender age, as little as 13 years. The number of girls being married off is right now about 48%. A 
a girl is not fully developed and now they're being impregnated. If we are losing girls in Chama, we are losing a generation to come. A generation that's supposed to participate in the propagation of the gospel. Child marriage perpetuates poverty. We need to be practical in our Christian faith by helping the local people. We just need to give them a helping hand. We don't want to import solutions. What can we do about it? Education is the best uh, empowerment that you can give to anybody. The Sengas who have been considered like a forgotten tribe, and no one is interested in providing literature for us. We are told we have to learn our neighbor's literature for our education, for our worship, for agriculture, for you to get information on health. It means you have to learn other people's languages. We don't have written books. People just speak. They are oral cultures. They love to listen. Yeah, they love to listen. The difficult part of a life in Chama is compounded by a lot of disadvantages. In terms of the terrain, hard to reach, roads are a big, big challenge. To even get the word of God in the language, learning has been a big, a big problem. For you to excel in terms of education, you have to pass through a lot of barriers. When you are born, you have to learn Senga, which is the mother tongue. And when it's time for you to go to school, they introduce another foreign language. And then they have to be introduced to English because that's the official language for Zambia. And then when they begin to go to church, they have to be introduced to Tumbuka because that's the nearest Bible they have. So for you to excel, you have to learn Senga, you have to learn Nyanja, you have to learn Tumbuka, you have to learn English. Very, very hard indeed. The translation of the scriptures into the local languages opens great doors for us. The Bible is the most translated book in the world. And when it reaches a community and when people have the word of God in their language, not only are they getting the gospel presented to them, but communities now have a reason to speak their language. It becomes a part of their identity, and their language is identified as something legitimate. To have this translation helps their linguistic culture to be sustained. And so the interest is not just the word of God. The interest is to preserve the language. But of course you know that the Word of God is alive. It begins to transform people's lives. Starting the translation was something that makes you look like you are insane. When we asked the singers to come on board and participate in the formation of the team to translate the scriptures in the local language, they said, we have been trying all this, it doesn't work. We went to Bible Society, Bible Society was not interested. They refused. They said, actually, the, your population is small. That was the first reason they gave us. No, your population is very small, so we can't support you. Oof, we tried uh, this and that, they refused. While prioritizing funding available for Bible translation, bigger and more viable people groups are preferred. The smaller people groups like Senga tend to be forgotten or are even deemed unviable. We try to organize us, ourselves as Sengas. I remember someone says, this is a non-starter, it can't work. At first, we faced challenges of doubt. Everyone was refusing, no, it 
it can't it can't materialize this is just a dream it can't work but we believed in our hearts that yes it will be difficult but not impossible yes it will be a challenge but this does not mean it can't work and so when we created the first team in Osaka and they saw that it was not going anywhere people backed off so we remained only two of us the, the, myself and the vice chair person so what do we do that's how now father katete came up with the idea by also looking to other uh, opportunities if we are willing we find other people who can support us where and good we can do it this is the longo river the main source of water for this area for human and wildlife and wildlife here is uh, very very important it creates meat for the people it also creates an avenue for uh, our income generation for tourists and the like so the main challenge that we have here is human wildlife conflict uh, the fishing they're using nets to, to catch fish and that people to feed their families the crocodiles uh, and the human begin now to have a conflict and of course the human being is injured terribly injured sometimes death uh, occurs and also hippos a lot of people have died uh, others are dying because they are competing for the water uh, sometimes it's the uh, buffaloes wants to drink water and the woman wants to draw water and so this trying to avoid coming here and then they don't have clean drinking water so that's where the challenge is The understanding that was there all along was that God could only speak to people who had the Bible in their mother tongue. So when the word of God uh, was being preached to the Senga community in Chama, people would not really take it that uh, God was talking to them, God wanted them. We don't even understand the language that God is using to talk to us because it's foreign language. We made application to different organizations to help us. And because we have never had a history of Bible translation, they were not interested. It was difficult for them. I can't blame them that they were not willing to help us because there was no history that we have done something. We are experts. There's no one else who's going to do it for us. If these other guys are not doing it, why don't we do it on our own? If, if no one is willing to help us, why don't we help ourselves and be able to move on? We don't have to wait for people to uh, do things for us. We have to take the initiative and move on. We did a survey uh, around the community. So what we saw was actually a lot of people, they can't read, most of them. Creating a writing system where it doesn't exist is very extensive and it takes a very long time. Even if you do, the community then has to be taught to read and at best only a very small minority will reach a level where they can read and understand the Bible. There is no guarantee that with a written Bible most people of these communities will be able to read and understand it. The written Bible always is for those that have been privileged to have acquired a certain skill of reading and writing. Is God the God of those who are able to read and write? No. God loves all of us. We are all equal before the Lord. So whether somebody went to school or somebody did not go to school, before the Lord we are equal. The question is how do you help them? Bible translation organization workers went in and completed a survey there. They spent four years with the community and they established a very clear need for the gospel in the Sangha language. 
when we saw that the outcome of the survey was very favorable, the viability of the language. This is a language that can be sustained. We had to take the initiative and move on, mobilize the people. It was difficult as starting point, you, you really don't know where to start from. But starting like this, it now awakens the giant. Then we uh, uh, came across one of the organizations, which is Fed Count by Hearing. They are doing some uh, uh, audio training. Seventy percent of the world's population are oral communicators. God's word in audio form is an absolute necessity. So oral Bible translation is simply the process of a native speaker listening to a Bible in a language that they understand and then translating it orally into their native tongue. After seeing the challenges the district is facing, I think to bring oral Bible translation would be a great idea. This audio Bible, it does not segregate or it does not discriminate when it comes to education. The Sangha team was a group of church leaders that simply had a mission and a vision to get God's word into the Sangha language and they really didn't know how they were going to do that. They had a great advocate who ended up approaching us and requested us to come and do a training. And we told them that we need to have resources that will help us carry on this project in a professional manner. And so we needed the staff to be there Monday to Friday for them to be able to, to work and produce the scriptures that we need. They said, we have never done this before, but uh, we'll see if something can happen. After a few weeks, we received an email asking us if we had a budget for it. We said, yes, we have had a budget all along, but there was no one who was willing to fund our budget. Even though these people had all of the intent and the desire to get this project started, they didn't have funding. By God's grace, Reverend Katete had the audacity to ask us if we would be able to help fund this project. And through God's faithfulness, we told Reverend Katete, well, we've never funded a project, but we could start now. And so we partnered with him and ended up pioneering a funded OBT project with the Senga team. That has led to funded projects all across the globe. It was because of the audacity of that request that we were able to start something so big. He is from the Senga community. Reverend Katete had a dream and a vision to get the Bible to his people. And that's how we started. We, we got the stuff okay, this is what we're going to do, and uh, found a place to rent. Just like that. Up to now, I can't believe that we started. As the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So that concept of hearing is very key. The coming of this program in my chiefdom, in my district as Senga people, it will help our people to understand the real word of God. They should understand the power of the blood of Jesus through the proper understanding of God's word, through the language that they are able to understand, which is saying. In 2019, we were able to start a workshop in the Sangha community. So within three months from that request, we were able to get this project started. He makes a way where it seems to be no way. He put together a group of other church leaders gathered in Lusaka and started a volunteer organization. In their spare time, they come together and they help manage and advocate for the Sangha Translation Project. 
They are determined now to reach not just the Sangha community, but every single remaining translation need in Zambia. When we created the local team, some people misunderstood us. They were thinking this is an, a tribal kind of project. We feel this project is for the whole community. That's why we have to come up with an idea of bringing everyone on board so that everyone feels inclusive, everyone feels it's theirs. We are in a battlefield against the enemy. The interpretation and translation of the Bible is something that the enemy does not want to be done. Because he wants to keep people in the dark. So doing this work is by the grace of God. So we have to thank him for what he is already doing. In Chama, we have more than 60 churches, different denominations. We wrote uh, some letters calling each one of them to a meeting. And so we had to sit down and tell them, we need a Bible of our own. Yes, we are different churches with different denominations, with different names. But we said, OK, guys, let's put this aside. Let's work as a team, because each one of us uses the Bible. Let's work together so that at least we have our own Bible which can help actually our, our local community around. So if there's a need of any support, any contribution, either of in form of money or human resource, we put aside our doctrinal differences, but on this one, we are really united together. There is a lot of excitement in Chama as a whole because of the coming of this program. Oro Bible is made after listening to the source audio Bible. You translate it into the target language already. Render is a software that supports oral Bible translation. This uh, software it has several stages within it. It's an automatic process that you finish one process or stage, you get to the next stage. It walks you through all of the steps of typical Bible translation, but it's made for somebody that doesn't necessarily read or write with varying levels of education or tech savviness. The target language, which is the receptor language, that's the first education somebody must have. For you to qualify to become a translator, you should be a native speaker of the language because you understand the culture. The main point of Render is that it simply acts as a workflow management system. Everyone has to internalize the whole passage. For you to, to be helped internalizing, sometimes you get the moving objects like his stones. You can put this is Jacob, Isaac, their wives. When you get into the books, at least you're able to remember those stones. Sometimes you may use pictures. If the story is capturing people like Moses, what was Moses doing at this moment? Those, they are only aiding you, they are only helping you to internalize the story. You may also use a, a drama. You, you are going to play the role of Mary, you are going to play the role of Martha, you are going to play the role of Jesus. If a passage is small, you can take the whole day. If it's a, it's a big passage, it takes a week. When they're satisfied that they've understood the meaning, they draft it or they orally reproduce it and record it. After a set, move from that stage to community check. So at community check, that's where it will have to be presented to the community. They are going to talk about how the language, the receptor language, in our case, the Senga language, how has it been presented? Has it been presented appropriately or misappropriately? We pick people from seven chiefdoms. Each chiefdom must contribute so that when the Bible is out, no chiefdom will say we didn't participate, we are not accepting this Bible. It cannot work in our chiefdom. We don't want that. Bringing people on board gives us the impetus to be able to realize that it can be done. The Senga people are not Bible translators. They are learning as we are doing it. And the potential has been realized, and you can see that they're now becoming experts. Some people thought we are just jokers. We'll not go anywhere. But now they're able to see that we have done the book of Luke, the book of Acts, and now we are doing the book of Genesis. 
and the churches are making use of that. That gives us uh, a lot of encouragement and excitement to see that the product is being used. And those who thought that we won't be able to, to make it are now coming on board as it is possible. The church is benefiting so much. By the church, I mean all the denominations. It's like empowering churches to reach out. The churches are able to go out there and make use of the product. Uh, the number of churches in Chama is growing, and that is really having soldiers confronting the enemy of darkness that has been covering Chama for a long time. Like Isaiah said, the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. Everyone is getting the meaning, yes, personal, individual. When you have this translated into Senga, it sits well and it gives hope, assurance, and a new life because we have discovered something that we are missing for a long, long time. Death has no power over me anymore. I'm alive in the Holy Spirit. Satanism has no power over me anymore. Poverty has no power over me anymore because the one who is in me is greater. The joy that I'm looking for is found in Christ. The peace I'm looking for is found in Christ. The love I'm looking for is found in Christ. This is the most precious gift because God has come down to speak to Sangas directly. Today, you don't need someone who knows how to read. You only need someone who will hear. And they have ears to hear. Don't you have ears? God who was far away from us is the God that has come close. He's staying with us in our homes. He speaks to our hearts, to our life every day. Chiuta kwa shukari na lero wa kijola kulira kuitu kwa ise tabazimwa ishimanya. So I think I want to please. I can't imagine what to we need to empower the people because the energy that God has given to them is for each one of us to be useful to the kingdom of God and our communities. The impact that the audio Bible has made is huge because of how frequent people use it. They are able to listen to the word of God at any time, whether he's going in the field for farming, he's going in the river for fishing, he's going to the market. Now they have replaced the music with the Bible. Others have even started going to church just because they can testify that if God can talk to me in the language that I understand, who am I to remain at home and not go to church and worship Him? So they can feel that they have a responsibility to worship God because they can see that God has been so merciful to them. The Bible, I've come to understand that it's a living word which goes deeper into our minds and that it brings also God closer to us as the belief also grows. That makes my faith to grow. Sometimes you have to pinch yourself, is this, being, is this real? When people are using it on radio and uh, they're able to use it in the community and also in the schools, I say, is this real?
The loom of God's perfume has been a product that has helped to amplify the audio Bible translation. And it speaks out as if Jesus was really a singer. When they are able to see, they did it fast, they learn fast. It sticks in people's hearts, in people's minds, because people are able to relate to their stories. You don't have to preach anymore. Preaching is about explaining what happened so that people can make a decision, but they are able to see for themselves. And people gave their lives to Jesus immediately. We don't have to preach. And people started asking for prayers, because they saw Jesus laying hands on the sick and the sick being healed. And we started praying, and some people were getting healed. We saw the people yearning for God. We saw the people receiving the healing. We saw the people receiving Jesus Christ. We saw the people being made strong to stand in the Lord. Now it's not a hopeless life. Now God is on their side. Now they know that they are not on their own. God is with them. Emmanuel is ever present in their lives. Hello. I'm speaking to you from the countryside in southern England and I wanted the chance to say congratulations to the Senga community in Zambia. When I thought of making Lumo, the dream was always to make the films in a way that allowed everyone to watch and hear the words of their own Bible in their own language. And it seemed an impossible goal, but I wanted to reach 1,000 language versions for Lumo. I'm so excited and happy that you, the Senga community, have the 1,000th language version. I hope you'll all enjoy the films and that seeing and hearing them in your own language will help you to live the gospel in your own lives. This is indeed uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And somebody was said something like prophetic that the end of the world is near because the forgotten tribes, like the Sengas, now have got the word of God in their own language. God is really at work, but for us to speed up the process, we need every other language to be on board. Bilta has taken a, a small vision and turned it into something much larger than itself. They have agreed with the Bible Society of Zambia to take on the task of reaching all remaining translation needs in Zambia, and then they hope to go into neighboring countries as well. God is really anointing ordinary people, not people that are coming from afar, but they are local people anointing them with the Holy Spirit, that they are able to proclaim the message. I feel that the Great Commission easily be fulfilled if everyone look at it from that perspective, that the local people need to be engaged, the local people need to be involved. It transforms the whole community. Oral Bible translation is not simply for Bible translation organizations. It's going to be accomplished by churches and local organizations. This task is meant to come from the ground up, and Singh is an excellent example of that. They have started a movement that's going to reach not just the Sangha community, but every community that needs a Bible in Zambia and in Southern Africa. My challenge to all the believers out there, if there is no Word of God available, then God is calling you to begin the movement. Don't wait for other people to come. Do it, and then they'll come and join you. You are the first resource. The first resource is the gift that God has given you. Your very own life is a resource. Your very own passion is a resource. Your very own vision to see beyond the now is a resource. So don't wait for other resources to come. The mentality should be about the kingdom of God. And once you have that mentality, then the Lord who just flow. We just need one much stick to set fire for the whole bush. You don't need thousands of matches. 
We have seen the light and we can't hide it. We can't put a cover on it. There's need for all of us that have been affected to stand up and make ourselves available that God may use us to make the Word of God available. You don't need to be a professor. You don't need to have a PhD. What you need is a passion. What you need is a heart. It's not about your limitation. It's about the presence of God in your life that opens great doors. By the time you know it all, the whole village is set on fire for the Lord. Thank you.